Hi there, good morning everyone. Today's reading is going to be um, past, present, future, love and career reading. You've got three piles, pile one, pile two and pile three. Pile one looks slightly different because I did actually deal your cards um, and then had to start again for a reason you don't really want to know about. Um, so they're all the same though, it doesn't really matter either way, you still get the same reading. So one, two or three. Okay then, hi there, power one. I know your cards because I've just seen them before, so let's go straight into it. Your energy at the moment doesn't have to be this energy that you walk around with since childhood. It could just be changes that are happening in your life. Your energy is intense and it's focused. You've got death, you've got Scorpio. So you are somebody who is not bothered about grey, black or white suits you find, not in between. You want strong personalities around you and you're feeling your inner strength and you're ready to move in any direction that your life calls you at the moment. There's a strength behind you and there's a fearsome ability to, to make changes that other people might find uncomfortable. You've also got your Uranus in the 11th house, so I think you're somebody who's very forward-looking, who is basically knows what they want, their hopes and their wishes, and they're prepared to make these changes work for them. You've also got the King of Pentacles, Knight of Pentacles in the middle. This isn't your usual Knight of Pentacles that suddenly is horse that you normally interpret as plodding practically towards something. This one's slightly different. It's focused, it's looking straight at you. So this movement in your life, I think you are... It's like a, I'm trying to think of insightful, but a perception that's quite focused and fierce. There's, there's no mucking around with you. You're somebody who can see the bigger picture. You're somebody who knows where you want to go and how to get there. And if you don't think you do, I think you're lying to yourself. In the best possible way, I think you haven't thought about it. Because I think that if you sat down and were honest with yourself, you do actually know that there are changes coming, you're in the middle of it and you're not scared and you're just ready for it. And I think you know how to do the details as well without me even going through this because this is a real strong pile. I think you know exactly where you want to go. I think you've got the strength to get there and I think you've got the insight and the ability, ability to make the small steps work for you to get there eventually. Real strong focus pile, fearsome pile this one. Right, this is where I mucked up when I started started doing it the first time. I started, started interpreting this first line as career and it's love. So I had to go back and start again. So let's go. In your love life, it gives me the impression that you have been facilita facilitating. Is that such a word? Basically, you've been flipping in between thinking what you want, knowing what you want and possibly not sure. You may have your eye on somebody or you're, you are mulling over a situation in your life and you're wondering whether it's what you want, um, your next step, there's just that pull back feeling of not acting but doing a lot of thinking. I wonder whether it's somebody from your past, whether you are either with somebody from your past in a relationship that may possibly be quite established or whether you know somebody who was part of your childhood or whether just somebody you met possibly could be separated because I often think more time in this rather than somebody you met last week. And I wonder whether that's just something that you're weighing up at the moment. I think that deep down, I don't, why do I feel that you're separated? Two of Wands to me is an action and the fact that it's past makes me think you may not be with this person so it may not be an established relationship like some sort of um, long-term partnership. But with the Eight of Pentacles here, I've got my eye on your last card as well when I'm saying this. The Eight of Pentacles here makes me think that you are working, you're a hard worker. You're working towards something that you want in a relationship and you're not afraid to put the effort in. I think you have some sort of strong work ethic that makes, 
makes me feel or makes me think that you're not afraid to put in the effort to get whatever you want. I do think you're one of those per these people with the death and with Scorpio, the 11th house. It's really strange you've got these two together, these four together, those two stick together, those two stick together. So to me, it feels like it's almost fateful that they've come out together and it just tells, it speaks to me that you are somebody who is very a very strong personality you know where you're going and you're not wavered easily but you're very good at taking the steps to get there so it's not somebody who speaks of wishful thinking to me and with the eight of pentacles here if you have your eye on somebody or you're attracted to somebody then you're prepared to put the effort into in a very mundane everyday hard-working manner You're somebody who will make the effort to ask this person whether they need help, somebody who will make sure they're in the same vicinity as this person too. You're not afraid. You're not somebody who fantasises in their bedroom. <laughs> we all do that. You're not somebody who um, just does the thinking, does the feeling and not the action. You're not scared. You're a pusher and you know where you want to go. So well done to you. And the end result is the Ace of Cups. So if you do have somebody in mind who you are thinking about and who, are, who you are prepared to put the effort into without having any fear, then I think that you will get a reward at the end. It's almost as if your heart is open and you are flourishing and it makes you feel good about yourself. It makes you feel good about who you are. And to, to be honest, these cards speak to me of somebody who deserves to feel really good. You're, you're a big personality. A strong person who's not afraid to go after what they want. You're not afraid to put the hard work into anything that you want and you have the resources to do it. You're not afraid to change. You're quite perceptive because this, you know, Scorpio is very watery. They they don't like to appear vulnerable and they don't really like to be too loud. Neither does Aquarius not to be too loud about what they want and where they want to go. But Aquarius is very. They're both very fixed. You are, yeah. You are huge. You are focused and you are going somewhere. And you're these are really good cards. You're not afraid to. Take your time to get there. Eight of Pentacles, Knight of Pentacles. You know, with that energy, you know, you could just basically go into. If that was misused, the energy that you have at your disposal, you could go, you know, really down the wrong track of being huge party person. You know, drinking too much, partying too much, fighting too much. But I get the impression with you that you just basically funnel it down the correct pipe and it comes out and it comes out for the best for you and probably everybody else around you so anyway back to relationships you may have somebody who you have been doing a lot of thinking about um and then this is where the work comes into play at the moment where you are now possibly thinking of practical ways how to get close to that person how to bring them back into your life and how to make the best life possible with both of you together and then the end result is the Ace of Cups. So it's almost as if you get your heart's wish. The 11th house as well, and Uranus. You know, it even could be something that happens quick. It might be something that this person comes into your life all of a sudden again, because there's a past connection here. Okay, right, let's go on to your career. Judgment, to me. Right, this is what I'm picking up. With your career, with judgment here, I wonder, I'm going to say epiphany here, I don't mean it. There's been some sort of epiphany with um, regards to your work. And I'm wondering as well, the fact this is in your past, whether it's got something to do with the time out lots of us had from work with, um, with COVID and just basically pulling back and rethinking what you want to do and where you want to go. Because there's huge changes here with you. And it possibly is in both arenas, love and work. But you've almost thought that you need to move. Well, you haven't almost. You have almost come to this with a death card and judgment. It's as if you have, um, you know, you're lying with your face down for a few months, a few years, and then you've just basically turned up and now you're looking at what to do. And it's it's like it slaps you in the face. There's something you want to do that you have on the back burner that I think is really strong. 
And with these cards, love and career-wise, they almost end up on the same track. And it makes me feel that whatever you put your mind to, you can do it. And I know that sounds really corny, but I honestly think that you can because these are strong cards and the outcomes are good. But I do think you've been through a period in your love life of doing a lot of thinking. And this card here, because you can see the similarity, they're very similar. There's a, you are in a period in your career now of almost the same as you were in your love life in the past where you are just wondering what direction to take. It's as if there's a lot going on in your head and you're wondering how to make it practically work. And I think that once you get going with regards to your career, there'll be no stopping you. The end card for you in regards to career is a strength. So it's somebody who, um, who stops in a career reading, I would say, can you see this card? It's somebody who stops doing things for surface reasons. It's somebody who stops running around trying to people please. It's somebody who stops making the money and then spending it the weekend on clothes. <laughs> it's somebody who's actually just pulled out, had that judgment, had that epiphany, epiphany and um, thought where they're going to go and then you've made that decision and there's like an almost an awakening of an inner strength inside yourself knowing that you're not going to work for something that you think that you need and then you know you, you're in a job that you don't really like and then you get the money and then it's gone within the first week of payday it's, it takes you to take a step back to think actually what do I want long term you know, what do I want out of my life long term? Where do I want to go? And with the strength card here, you're probably very good at quelling your base instincts. You're not going to put yourself on the line for money, um, for dragging yourself through a job that you don't enjoy. It's almost as if you're waking up to who you want to be and where you want to go. So this is a really moving path for me. And it's strong and the outcomes are good. But the outcomes are good, I think, only because you're going to put the effort in. We always used to joke, my, my sisters, when we were kids, we always used to do lots of astrology together. Um, and we always used to joke about um, Jupiter transit. So you'd watch them going around your chart and Jupiter's are always like um, beneficial. So you'd watch them going around and think, oh yeah, it's gonna hit that part of my chart. And we'd you know, joke about what we were gonna get and whatever. And we'd get like a nice letter through the post or, you know, and we'd, oh, nice letter. It was like a, a running joke in our family because you'd sit and wait, sit and wait. But if you haven't put the effort in, when these lucky breaks come, you get absolutely nothing. And it is funny when you're a kid and you're thinking, yeah, that's really nice, got, a, I don't know, a cream cake. Um, but it doesn't always work like that. You can, if you're interested in astrology, you can watch things moving around your chart and then if you put the effort in, then that's, if it's what's meant to be coming for you, that's when you get it. You give me the impression of somebody who has power behind them and goes after what they want. They've put the effort in and it's all beginning to slowly unravel and you're going to get what you need in love and career. But don't stop working at it. I think you are very good at seeing waves and patterns in the bigger sense. Not just reading behind the surface, like we talk about dreams and stuff like that, and you know, picking people's energy up. Not just that, it's basically more like business, it's it's big waves, it's worldwide waves, if you know what I mean, they're bigger. You can see where you want to go in the next 10, 20 years and in big terms, rather than just basically, you know looking forward to buying a dress at the weekend or something. If you're a man, same applies. <laughs> okay, right. Okay, I'm going to leave that there, part number one. I don't think I've got anything more to say on that. You know, really nice pile. Really nice pile. Huge strength, huge ability to marry that up with the mundane which is really good because you get people that just can't make things happen because they just think too much or they're too emotional, um, which is just as beautiful. But you, I think you're going to make a mark in whatever you do. Whatever you decide to do, you're going to make a mark. So I'm going to finish there, pie number one. Thank you ever so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. And come back and have a listen again. Bye. Hey, hi there, pa.
pile number two right your pile is coming across quite strongly to me as well you are somebody who works so hard and i wonder whether people with the devil and the emperor card here whether people actually think that you're quite cold because you're quite focused and it doesn't mean you are actually cold but you've come across here as the emperor as you've come across here as a devil and capricorn and sick house there's no other way i can interpret this as you are somebody that works your backside off and you have a mission as if you want to get somewhere and you're going to do it you're not afraid to work on your own you probably come across as being quite in control you probably don't like to be um challenged too often because i think you probably come back like a, a huge force when you are i think that you are somebody who possibly in your early life could be have been brought up in a family where working hard was seen as the way forward or there could possibly have been some sort of financial strain where you felt that you were put in a position where you had to earn or that money was important and being secure was important or you could have had to look after somebody um, and just got that work ethic and that need to make sure that you were safe and secure with regards to money. I do think that you possibly could push people with it because this is so strong. Emperor is like Aries energy and um, the devil Capricorn, Capricorn sixth house. There's no other way to interpret these is you basically work really hard. But I wonder because these four cards together are so strong, whether you're relationships take a back burner because we're doing relationships and career now your career focus you want to go somewhere you don't mind working on your own but you definitely don't want people in your way um and you're prepared to put the effort in but it's quite a cool pairing here so love may take the back burner within your life because capricorn and aries are quite cool but they can also have the energy of like a parental energy of somebody who is feisty and fights for, for somebody else and they make very good parents because they provide they're very sort they like the thought of being married they like the thought of the husband um i'm trying to think i suppose the wife taking the family name if it's a man they like the thought of being connected in that way and they like the thought of having children for the reason that they see the children as almost oh i can't think of the word an extension of them but in a old-fashioned way as in the they carry the family name sort of way you may be somebody who likes the thought of or is already or likes the thought of having a traditional marriage and a traditional um wedding i'm trying to think what else energy this makes me think of And then once is the type of person that that likes tradition and is very good with their other other half even though their energy is quite cool they are always there and they provide and they make them feel loved through practical things they make them feel loved through making sure that they are provided with everything they need and they feel as if it's their job to provide for other people. So that could have been carried on from your childhood with some relationship to do with your parents that you feel that you need to provide for people and you're almost pushed into the position of taking responsibility a lot. You're the type of person that in work people walk out of work and leave you to wrap everything up. You know, they've gone home and they've switched off but you're the one that's still there doing all the hard bits and bobs when everything falls to pieces everybody turns to you to make you know as if you've got those wide shoulders that can carry everybody else so i think in some ways you know because this is so strong i think in some ways that you need to give yourself a break and be a little bit softer on yourself at some times because you're not carrying everybody in life you know you're carrying yourself and where you want to go if that's where your passion lies and i would think that you are quite well focused here but if your passion lies elsewhere or is beginning to change a little bit then just give yourself some time with people that you love or you know just take that yourself because this is strong it's a strong feeling, a strong work ethic. And it's almost as if, I'm not saying this is true in any way, shape or form. And I don't even think it is for people with Aries, Capricorn, actually probably not Aries. But with Capricorn, it's almost as if it's um, you're being driven by a lack of feeling good enough all the time. 
the people that I know that have this sort of Capricorn energy, especially on feminine planets like the Moon or the Venus, never feel as if they're good enough. Actually, that's not totally true because I know somebody with it, an Aries Moon conjunct Saturn and they're quite focused and their self-esteem is fine. It's not fantastic, it's fine. But I also know somebody with it on Venus who's a little bit more playful and he, he never feels as if he's worth asking for money for anything that he does. He works really hard, he gets so much money for his company, and then I said, why don't you ask them for more money? It's my brother. Uh, and he's like, well, no, no, I'm happy. I'm thinking, well, they're bloody making money out of you. You know, it's just fair, just ask them. But anyway, that's enough, <laughs> enough there. But on the edge of this, you've got Pallas. So I do think that you are very much aware of how things work, of the pattern in things and what's going on in life in a, you might be quite perceptive of your dreams, you might be very good at just picking up. I just think you're a very astute business person. You're very good at picking up, um, you know, patterns in, I'm going to say stock market, I don't know what on earth I'm talking about because I have known absolutely nothing about money. Um, you know, that type of thing, you can see patterns in businesses, how they roll and when to pick them up, when to take advantage of business situations, you know, in a smaller sense, perhaps in your particular work sense as well. I don't know what I'm talking about in regards to which particular job, but it's having an insight into patterns and I'm thinking in terms of business, how situations roll and you can take advantage and nip in when something needs, you know, when there's a hole there for you to make some money. Okay, right, okay. That's quite strong, so I don't know if it's going to apply to everybody. If not, you are basically very focused and very good at working hard. You also, with the Aries and Capricorn energy, they're almost, there's almost this there's a feist behind you as well. So you could be very good at um, working with people, tough kids or, or just tough people in tough situations because you don't have that. There's no emotional quality in here. This may not be you as you were born. This may be just the energy you are at the moment or the, what I'm picking up for the way that this information may come out later. I don't know. But Aries and Capricorn to me, don't speak to me of people that are ruled by their emotions. So you're probably very good at working in difficult situations where you don't come home and cry. And certain people need to do certain jobs. There are so many jobs in the world that you do not need to be emotional for because it won't help you. You just need to be there. You need to work hard. You need to focus because you're not going to help the people around you unless you can do that. You provide the structure for other people. Okay, right. Let's go on to love. Right. I wonder whether something in the past has happened. Excuse me, I have a drink. whether something in the past has happened with you that has moved quite fast and opened your eyes. It's almost as if you've fallen in love or fallen for somebody, or I'm going to say fall in love because your, your whole energy doesn't make me think that you've fallen in love in a fanciful way. It's as if there's communication, there's some sort of passionate communication. It makes me think of being love struck, to be honest. Or if it's not love struck, it's some sort of, I'm trying to pander it down to somebody who I feel is quite practical now because I'm not practical at all. I'm wondering whether you um, have had an email or some communication or you've run into somebody or so, let me just pull some cards that's made you feel good and it's got you excited. It's got you excited. Something may have happened. It could be some sort of communication, some sort of look, some sort of promise of something that may possibly happen. Um, or somebody's just basically told they they think you're you know, attractive in some way. It's made you feel good. This is in the past. So you could possibly have come into this reading looking for something to do with relationships and because you've had something ignited in yourself that started making you feel a little bit passionate. Right, I wonder whether it's somebody, I'm going to say what I'm thinking, it won't apply to everybody, because of this uneven situation, whether it's somebody in work, or somebody that's older than you, there's some imbalance here, where somebody's giving and somebody's taking, so there could be some imbalance, whether, you know, one's, it could be with your energy, that you take on the more parental work, parental job, um, sorry, position, where you could be above this person in some way, shape or form, in age, or in work, or they're above you, so... It could go either way because that's 
the six of pentacles here is sharing and giving but it's almost as if it's uneven as if the relationship is somehow slightly tinged by not being on the same page due to age or work situation or some form of relationship if it's work i wonder whether the work actually makes it difficult for you to communicate or work together in some way or show your feelings in a work situation if it's not work there's also the possibility that one of you might have a child or may look after your child or there's some connection with somebody who's young you could work with kids or that you could just have a child and in some way you feel as if this makes it harder to communicate with this person perhaps if you are in work or you have a child you don't feel like you're both on an even keel and that's how you feel at the moment right in the near future the relationship is going to be there's different ways to interpret this your work situation could just carry on it's stability it's just the way it is it's just carrying on and there's no movement in it it's basically the attractions there um there's that uneven feeling of not being able to communicate as clearly as you, clearly as you possibly want it. It's not work. It's just basically the give and take isn't even. One's giving and the other one's almost waiting for the text, almost waiting for the call. Um, and what this leads to is stability. Not that much change, but it, does, it still feels good. It still feels stable. But the, the devil here is as if you're bound to it in some way or whether the person's bound to you in some way. And it could be some, any form. It could be the fact that you still have to work in the same office. It could be the fact that you just feel um, sexually drawn to this person. You can't get away from it. Um, it could be a myriad of reasons. I mean, some people, because you've got the devil twice here, some people quite enjoy that feeling of being bound to something. It could be anything. It could be a mortgage. Especially with like these, these like house cards here. So, if it was a mortgage, okay, could be different interpretation here. You've possibly met somebody that's made you feel really good. This relationship might might be slightly uneven. You may have a child already, and at the moment in this situation, you may. I hope you haven't missed out anything there. I just noticed that the the video had stopped. Um, I was just saying that. In your career, you possibly could be working with somebody who has is lending you a helping hand or whether you're in a position that you work for a big organisation where you are, okay, that makes sense. You could be some who help lots of other people along. You could be, yeah. Okay, right, you could be in a situation in work where you have lots of responsibility, you help other people along. And that's just part of who you are. You take on a lot and you feel like you've got a lot, lot of responsibility or you have in the past. And you could be in a partnership, you could work very closely with somebody who you get on with, but you may feel like you're pulling them along and it's almost as if this situation is coming to a head and you've, you've had enough. At present, it's almost as if you are emotionally pulling out of the situation. You've worked your backside off. You take on all the responsibility. You're helping people. You put the effort in. But you can see that there's a shift going on with you at the moment. And it's almost as if you're cutting off emotionally from it. And I wonder what's going to happen, whether you feel like there's going to be some big change in your life. It's almost as if it's going full circle. And you possibly could want that little bit more for yourself. Let me put some more on these. It's like, a, it's like you've done all this hard work with yourself. You've put it into effort, put the effort in with other people. And it's almost as if you're quite happy with the way that you've asserted yourself. But you're almost looking for something a little bit more now. You could be a parent and you may want to put more time in with your kids. You could have a relationship that you're more interested in more than work. You could have just want to put some more time in with a, a person that you feel a lot of affection for. And it's like a balance possibly here. Poss yeah, okay. 
there are different scenarios with this but i do think there's some way that you feel like you have you just you want a bit more of something else in your life you could be in a relationship that you feel is unbalanced you could be putting more time into work and you want to basically put more time into fun things you want to put more time into your kids or a relationship and it's almost, if this is true in any way, shape or form, it may not be. It's almost as if this timing is the correct timing for you to start thinking of doing something that makes you feel alive. It possibly will go back to the Emperor and the Devil and the Capricorn cards of doing something that is practical, that's probably still helping people uh, and probably very focused and very career driven. But you may just slip some more time in for yourself. Make sure that your family and your love life um, is part of that rather than pushed aside from it. And this may be to do with somebody that you've actually fallen, fallen for recently. If so, this person may have come into your life to wake you up and pull you out of what you could possibly have felt was quite a cool existence without that passion. And that might be coming. Right, okay, I'm going to finish there with you, pal. Number two, I hope that helps in some way because your energy is quite strong and focused and I just feel, I just get the general feeling that it's time to give yourself a break. Give yourself, you know, a bit of love um, and stop working so hard and just pull out for a bit and make sure you laugh a, a huge part of the day. You spend a lot of time with people that make you laugh. Make life feel free and easy again. Because to me it feels like you've put the effort in for everybody else. Now it's time to take it back and go where you want to go. And focused on if you've definitely, if you've got a loved one or somebody who you have feelings for, and especially kids here, it makes me think that you put that effort in with them. Okay, right, pile number two, I hope that helps in some way. Um, I always forget to thank everybody who subscribed. I always, I should do that at the beginning, but I can never get the words out in the beginning because it's just so, you know, it's like you go into a cold room and you start fresh talking to a wall. But thank you for everybody who has subscribed recently and thank you for all your beautiful comments because they make me feel good. They do make me feel good. They make me feel it's worthwhile sitting free and talking to the wall. So thank you ever so much and I hope to see you again. Bye. Hi there, pile number three. Right, let's get going with you. Let's have a look at your love and career, past, present, future. So your energy here is very, it's very strange because all the cards seem to be, the large card seems to marry up with the, the card that it signifies in astrology. So it's been really weird the last two packs have been the same. You've got strength and fifth houses. So you are somebody who is, oh my gosh, you've got Jupiter too. So you're somebody who always takes the high road you don't function from your lower centers as in you're just basically you're you don't operate by fear you don't operate by jealousy you don't operate by materialism you operate from knowing inside yourself what's the correct thing to do and how to get it there's something quite regal about your energy i'm thinking of black panther the part that chadwick boseman plays in that it's just that energy of being um wise and beautiful and strong a real mixture of strength and wisdom about you with jupiter there jupiter always chooses the high road they can be naughty they can be annoying um but they <laughs> they are just fun to be with and they know what's correct even when they are the most horrendous, because Sagittarius at times can be, they can push 
and they can push. And I do think that Sweden <laughs> Sultan Sagittarius, so many Sagittarius people are born just to push you to your limit, to know when to make the correct choice and to know basically to push back because the, the fire signs, they don't like people they can roll over. So I'm wondering with you, whether with you that you are there to make people make the right decision. So you could be quite, I'm not saying um, the, the Leo cards are stronger, but you may have that tinge in you that has a devilish quality of knowing that you're pushing something, but you're still going to push it because it's fun. The fifth house and strength here and Jupiter, it's, it's, Jupiter's just naughty. It's like a mad puppy that springs in like a spaniel as well, not even just like a normal mad puppy, like a spaniel that springs through life um, and bounces back and gets back up, whatever happens. But with this strength card here, there's more of a regal quality, but it's got that feeling about it that you come across as being very much in control. You're probably very smooth and very sexy, but there's still something really naughty inside you. People don't see it until they've pushed you and then you give it back. I remember years ago of, I'm thinking of you and I'm saying these, this thing, or whoever's watching the reading, I'm just trying to portray the energy in a picture that I've got in my head of being, um, teaching really young kids. And these two boys came in, I think they were twins and they were all like Leo, Gemini. Uh, I'm very, I, I just knew. Um, because I knew their birthdays, to be honest. And they used to be like, they'd come into class or whatever it wasn't a class it was in a hall to be honest and they were just gorgeous they were just rolling around the place absolutely awful to have in school jumping on top of each other laughing and running around the sports hall absolutely bonkers they were horrendous to have in your class but they were such good fun to watch so that's the energy i'm getting with this and um, they it's a feeling of <laughs> No, don't do that. It's a feeling of strength, but it's just playfulness with it as well. It's a feeling of enjoying life, but actually choosing the correct way to live it. And even if you are naughty, or even if you put yourself into positions that um, could be seen as almost crossing the line, you do it with such a dignity and with such a strong ego that, that you just feel as if it's the right thing to do and people accept it. So you're very good at being open and warm in situations. I think people probably are very easily pulled towards you. Right. <clears throat> Saying that, you are all of that, but you also have a smaller part of you which can at times, which I suppose is quite Leo, because Leo's got very strong pride. You can be quite defensive in some ways and almost, I'm going to say nitpicky. It gives me an impression with Virgo here, which is quite very much um, interested in words and the way things come across, whether, and the nine of wands is quite defensive, whether you take slights to heart very easily. And if this might be part of the read here, might be part of something that's happened in work or your love life, where although you have this energy about you that's larger than life, I wonder if somebody, because the Leo in the fifth house and pride thing, whether if somebody has basically with Virgo and the nine of wands got your back up by something niggly. So perhaps it's not you that's, perhaps it's not you that also, that, that picks at small things. If somebody does that to you, because there's a defense here as well. So I wonder Okay, it could go either way. So I wonder whether you are very affected by people who are small-minded and nitpick at you. And I think as a return, it could work both ways. You could also be the same back to them. When in fact, you aren't that. You are this. You are a majestic beast. You are Jupiter, strength, fifth house. You're a majestic beast that is put on earth to play, have fun, be creative, make people's lives feel bigger. So you must always keep away from this energy here. That's what I'm picking up anyway. Okay, so love life. The fool. I wonder whether you're somebody that lots of people find attractive, especially with this energy here, because you seem quite at ease with yourself, that you are a big personality and quite magnanimous. I 
said it in some way because here you've got lots of people surfing around you so I'm wondering whether in the past you've you find it quite easy to attract people maybe not people that you want in your life but I think lots of people are pulled towards you with this energy here you've probably got that openness and that warmth that people feel as if they want to be part of that because it makes them feel bigger it makes them feel bigger and it's almost like people want to be connected to you because it makes their lives feel more fun. So I wonder whether you've had lots of people around you. Now, at the moment, I'm picking up, or well, these cards to me speak of somebody, which could be to do the nine and the ones in the Virgo here, whether it, it's heartbreak, is if something's really struck you and it could be some sort of exchange or words or some slight or something small that's causing you anxiety. It makes me think it's something verbal. You've got the King of Swords here. You've got Virgo and the Nine of Wands. Somebody could have said something to you or maybe a particular person. This particular person may be quite good with their words. They may be quite clever at using words to hurt possibly or you've overheard something from somebody and it's caused you some sort of upset which you almost feel as if you can't move forward from. It's causing you some sort of heartache. I don't know there. That's what I'm thinking. It's just the mixture of your energy is big, expansive and warm and beautiful. And then you've got this little part of you. And I'm going to say part of you. I do actually mean that because often the bits that we have in us in ourselves, we project onto other people. You know, it's an interchange, isn't it? Because if you didn't have it in you, you probably wouldn't, you know, you could just move away from it. You wouldn't might even notice it, to be honest. If you didn't have that bit that can quit back and hurt people, then, you know, when it's given to you, you'd be like, oh, well, just move on. But it's obviously, if somebody has done that to you and you've overheard something or somebody in your, has hurt your ego through something that has been written or said or communicated at you in some way and it's caused you to pull into yourself. I don't know if that's true or not possibly could be I can put some more cards to see because that's quite specific I can put some more cards to see if there's if other scenarios I haven't picked up but your love life speaks to me of being focused on in a not such a, a positive way with these the fool here you possibly could have thrown yourself into a situation open a situation and it's almost as if you've let something in that you didn't want to let in and then you've got hurt something that's making you feel defensive and to me it's something nitpicky it's something inconsequential in some way but you've really taken it to heart it's hurting you and it's making you feel defensive you can't move forward it's maybe causing anxiety and it's causing you to possibly to overthink and the way out of this is basically it, it will go you've got the six of swords here and the six of swords is basically it to me is healing it's moving from one situation which is quite harder to a situation where everything will eventually feel good let me put some more cards on this yeah okay you've got your energy is huge you can deal with anything you are broad-minded you are probably very philosophical you're probably very giving and warm you have a lot of a warm and a lot of warm energy here and so if something has happened in your love life that's causing you a bit, bit of anxiety which to me is these cards here you feel you've had the three of swords twice there's very possibly something in you at the moment that has happened that's making you feel almost like you've hit rock bottom there's no ten of swords cards here but that's the feeling i'm getting because you've got the three of swords twice but then it goes back to the strength so everything that has happened to you whether it is small but it's painful in the end you're just going to end up being your your own beautiful strength. It's almost as if the situation has been called into play for you to realise who you are, to realise that you are this beautiful, expansive, warm energy. Right, okay, let's go on to career quickly. Um, probably won't be quickly by the way I've done it. In the past in your career, you may actually feel that um, you possibly could be in a, an equal position where somebody is giving to you financially or just you're in a position where 
um, you're below that person and having to take advice in some way, not always a negative way or vice versa, whether somebody is um, giving you money or providing for you or training you in some way. Um, possibly, I think it's the other way around or giving you, yeah, giving you money. I've got a funny feeling with your cards here that you're not the type of person that will kneel down in front of anybody. Yeah, and you've got the Sun card here as well, which is Leo. So I wonder whether in your career you're in a position where you train people, where you pull people up, where you make people, you use your energy to make other people shine. I feel that quite strongly because it links in so well with these cards here. It could be with fifth house, it could be children. It could just be young people, it could be sports, it could be um, entertainment. Just something that's fun or something that is youthful and you're in a position where you actually draw these people towards you and you help them. It doesn't have to be that, but you, I think in your work you have that position or that ability to expand people and make them feel good. Just checking the camera still on. Um, and I think you're really good at that and I think you're exactly in the right job. Or you're, 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 if your actual job isn't correct for you, you're in the right energy. And actually, you know, your job could be good for you because uh, I can see the, the next cards here. But I'm still going to carry on. You've got the Nine of Cups here as well. So I think your job actually makes you feel fulfilled. I can't read it any other way. You've got the Strength twice. You've got this Nine of Pentacles with one person in a position of being above others and being good at it because you're in the correct position. With, with these cards here, you know, you want to be in charge and you're good at it. With Jupiter here, it's a leader. It's the colonel, it's the general of the army. That's you. And I think with the fifth house here, it may be you, you're you in charge of something that is either children or something that's fun or sporty or creative in some way. And it fits you fine. There's no, there's no I, have, I can see the last card here. You've got no complaints, I don't think, about work from your cards here. That's what, it fits you fine. Even if the niggly, shitty bits in work and love annoy the pants off you, you you're probably in the right energy you're probably on the right track and, and everybody's got bits that annoy them haven't they but in the future it's almost as if you turn your back on some aspect of your career this is really hard for me to, to, to talk about right you've I'm just going to tell you the cards and see if it makes sense to you. You turn your back on something. Look at his face. Good Lord. <laughs> okay, you turn your back on something to do with your career. The reasons you could possibly do this are maybe something to do with the family or with finances. You could turn your back because you want more money and you think you're worth more money. And I think you're worth more money. And you're prepared to put the effort in. You're, you may start, perhaps, I, see this speaks to me of somebody who knows their self-worth. Past, present, you know your self-worth and it's almost as if you're moving on because you know your self-worth and you perhaps think that you are... worth more money i'm thinking i'm thinking this because this morning as i woke up i watched natalie hughes tarot she's talking about finances and knowing what you're worth and um it was really interesting so it makes me think of that because it's almost as if this expansive energy is huge and then you've got these cards here of knowing that you're very good at what you do there's like contentment and then you almost move your move away for something else that you're prepared to work on and put the effort in. So I wonder whether, if this is an inkling that you've had, that you're feeling strong in your career, you're feeling like you're worth more, I think you're probably right. And I think it's time to start, even if it's small steps, because the three of pentacles here is like craftsmanship, so you are honing your skills. I think that's what you need to do. 
And if you want to listen to that, Natalie Hughes, um, it's definitely worth listening to. Okay, right, okay, I'm going to finish their pile and I'm going to sum you up there before you go. Um, your energy is beautiful. It's wise, expansive, it's warm, it's playful, it's fun. And even though you've got these little niggly bits where there's a slight defense, possibly to do with the way that you communicate or people communicate with you, this is probably temporary and it just may be a niggle that's at the moment because it's coming out here. If it's not something and it's part of your personality where you think you quit people or you're a little bit sort of, because Virgo follows Leo around, so you very possibly could have a mixture of both or it could just be general energy and not be part of your chart at the moment. If you feel that you have that little bit inside you which likes to nitpick at somebody and have a little crack every now and then, then don't do it, just pull back. Because sometimes, you know, our minds take, especially Virgo, your mind can take you away and you start worrying about things and it's come out of your mouth and you think, actually, no, I'm sorry, didn't really mean that. So fire and the Virgo mitts can be quite like that because they give out, they're expressive, they're expansive and then there's this little Virgo bit when it's something they worried about and it comes out and I think, oh my God, I think I might have hurt some of these feelings. That can go either way. That could be energy that's, that you are playing with that's coming towards you or it's a lesson that you've got to learn um, and it's just something to be aware of. Right, so with relationships, I think that you're somebody with this energy and with the fool being surrounded by sharks here, I wonder whether you're somebody that's very attractive to other people and quite magnetic and you pull people towards you. And at the moment, there's this energy of hurt and upset and possibly words that have hurt, that have pierced. Or communication that has peers or somebody in particular um, a quite a cool masculine figure that has said something that's made you pull in your energy which you shouldn't do not with this energy it shouldn't be kept in um, and then you're healing from the pain we've lost a card here what on earth was that Oh yeah, it's this one, isn't it? So you're very good at picking up with Jupiter. They don't stay down for long. You are like a bouncy puppy, really. You've pick, you're gonna pick yourself up in the future. You're gonna get back to your old, fantastic, beautiful, shining, gorgeous self. And then if somebody has hurt you or something's niggling you, then they will be sorry. Then they will be sorry. In work situation, you need to bring out this energy because you have so much to give. I'm not going to go over what you're good at or why you're good at it because I've said it enough and you probably know already. Um, but I think that this, you have, I think you have good self-worth, but I do think that there may be something within the next three to six months, I don't know the timings, where you are going to feel that you want to be acknowledged for what you do and you're not afraid to hone your skills a little bit more before you say before you perhaps open a business or perhaps before you say to your boss I can't imagine you are in a position where you're telling people what to do though um you know this is what i can offer you know i can i can do this for all these other people so acknowledge what i'm worth too right okay part number three i hope i hope I hope it's recording. <laughs> that's my hope for today. I hope this is recording and I hope that's helped you in some way, shape or form. And before you go, because I always forget at the beginning, thank you ever so much for anybody that's subscribed recently and thank you for all your comments because I do find them fun to read. So thank you ever so much. I do hope to see you again and have a good day. Bye.